Hello and welcome to Money Life. I'm discussing SR Steel once again. As all of you know by now, SR Steel is the largest willful defaulter as categorized by the Reserve Bank of India. It's one of the first 12 cases that were referred to the Indian Banking uh, Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code after the code became a formal act. Now, what is new today? Prashant Ruya, son of Ravi Ruya, part of the promoter family, has gone back to court, in fact to the appellate tribunal that hears bankruptcy cases, to object to a bid by ArcelorMittal. ArcelorMittal, as you know, is one of the biggest steel companies in the world and it has bid to acquire SR Steel ever since it made the bid 600 days ago. Remember, insolvency and bankruptcy cases are supposed to be resolved within 270 days. But this case has dragged on for over 600 because the promoters find different ways to keep going back to the judiciary, whether it's the NCLT, the appellate tribunal, the Supreme Court, things keep coming back and it's dragging on and on and on. So what happens now? This time Prashant Ruya's objection is to Arcelor Mittal's bid because a few weeks ago, Lakshmi Mittal, who is the oldest brother, paid the dues by his younger brothers Pramod and Vinod Mittal to State Trading Corporation and settled a massive dispute that has been going on forever. Now, the brothers, as everybody knows, ever since Arcelor Mittal made an attempt to come back to India, have separate businesses. So, uh, Vinod and Pramod Mittal, who have actually run down a lot of companies and don't have a very great reputation, are the brothers of Mittal, but their businesses are entirely different. Because the older brother bailed out the younger brother, Prashant Ruya thinks that he should be disqualified because they're all together, this part of the same family. It's a nice way to push it into the court and have the court discuss it, have lawyers argue and buy more time. In fact, if you want to make a comparison, it's a bit like saying Mukesh Ambani should not bid for any company under the bankruptcy code because he bailed out his younger brother. We know why that happened, right? He bailed out the younger brother so that he stayed out of jail in the Ericsson case. But doesn't matter. This is what Prashant Ruya is saying. And the case is going to drag on a little further. There's going to be a new government, new in, at the center. We don't know if it is going to be BJP led. So it's nice to find a way to kick things into a new regime. That's what is going on over here. Now, what is interesting is that this battle is not being fought in India alone. In fact, there's a huge simultaneous global battle. Obviously, Arcelor Mittal is not taking things lying down. Apparently, there was an agreement. SR Steel is now registered in Mauritius, had a company in Minnesota called SR Steel Minnesota, which has also gone bankrupt like many of its businesses. This company in 2012 had agreed to sell iron pellets to ArcelorMittal in the US. It, the deal was ratified again in 2014 where SR Steel comes into the picture. The pellets weren't supplied and there was an arbitration going on. Meanwhile, the Minnesota company went bankrupt and filed for bankruptcy. So in the US, when a company is filed for bankruptcy, there's no more uh, case against it. But SR Steel as a partner is somebody whom Mittal could proceed against. There was an arbitration order, SR Steel participated for some time in the arbitration proceedings and finally backed out of it. So there's an ex parte order that is in favor of uh, Arcelor Mittal and gives them 1.5 billion with interest. Obviously now the Mittals are trying to recover that money. SR, meanwhile, is very interesting because in India, one way that SR Steel had of stopping the Mittal bid for their company was to make an offer by the promoter family to say, we will pay back 54,000 crore. Okay? This includes the secured creditors who come ahead of others in the insolvency proceedings and also the unsecured creditors, which included Standard Chartered Bank. Obviously, it's an offer that people would want to jump at, except nobody wants to ask what is the source of this money. And if they had access to 54,000 crore, why on earth are they a willful defaulter? Why are they making banks spend so much of money? Why are they dragging everyone? 
through this mess and remember these loans have been written off largely by banks and it's a massive amount banks especially our public sector banks are constantly recapitalized by the government at our expenses our taxpayers money that is recapitalizing banks so if the ruya family had so much of money why did they not make this offer before obviously people are not taking the offer seriously and the 54000 crore has not been accepted isn't it interesting that 54000 crore is significantly more than 1.5 billion that they are supposed to pay under us arbitration and they haven't paid so now mittal has made a claim in the uk courts why in the uk because believe it or not while all the bad debts and their big industries are in india our large industrialists are with 2 feet or 1 and 1/2 foot out in another country so they have operations all over the world their companies registered in mauritius in cayman island they headquartered at london or in dubai and naturally there is a case to be made in the london courts i think arcelor mittal moved the london courts because he is based out of london and the judicial system works much faster as you can see about a week ago he got a fantastic order which allowed a group of his people to go and conduct a raid of sorts yes that happens in the uk and look at laptops and electronic material and emails in sr's office now this is being contested in london but there is a very hard hitting order as of 2 weeks ago against sr for the recovery of 1.5 billion including taxes now before we come to that let's pause a little bit and come back to why any of this concerns us because like i keep saying indian banks are paying our taxpayers money being recapitalized at our cost and we the people have a stake in what they do or what they don't do so one of the many things there are several things that came out because of the london arbitration because apparently facts get presented over there which don't make it to the indian mainstream media i'm going to narrate three things that have happened one of them is bank guarantees so one of the things that indian banks have done apart from lending to sr steel sr oil sr par sr shipping and whole bunch of other companies is to lend to a company called sr investments sr investments has got money against personal guarantees issued by prashant ruya who as i mentioned is the son of shashi ruya who is a promoter of uh, sr along with his brother ravi ruya so there are two defendants over here in this case that has been filed before the debt recovery tribunal of andabad this is an order that came out recently that money life has had access to what does the order say that about 15000 crore between 13 and 15 with interest are the extent of personal guarantees that are issued by shantruya and ravi ruya one of the things that the court asked them to submit is companies in which they have 100% shareholding because when you issue a personal guarantee it is only your money your money in banks companies held by you that can be used for recovery who are the banks again as usual about the who's who of the indian banking sector led by public sector bank a clutch of indian banks have lent as i said about 15000 crore with interest this is probably the largest ever personal guarantee now how do you lend tens of thousands of crores in individual names without having something of their personal assets secured and knowing where the money is going to be recovered from but obviously banks were asking no questions at all to the ruyas and just let's put this 15000 crore in perspective two airlines which provide crucial air transport to people of india have collapsed kingfisher which owes only 9000 crore with all its interest to banks and jet airways more recently which owes 8500 crore to banks and some other uh, you know couple of thousand crores otherwise total amount is less than these personal guarantees issued by prashant and ravi ruya how many people are employed by the two airlines who have lost their job over 30000 people okay So what is more important to the economy aviation 
I'm not saying bail out those banks, but how on earth have Indian banks given so much of money against personal guarantees that are not recoverable? So the debt recovery tribunal in Ahmedabad apparently asked the Rubiyas to submit their passports, details about their family, as well as what are the companies in which they have a 100% shareholding. So what emerges from there? A. Prashant Ruya has most of his family living abroad, not his, his parents who are, have a Dubai address, his children who are studying in the US. Ravi Ruya also has his son living in Dubai. We know from the papers and especially the gossip columns that they have huge establishments in London. Now, they have just three companies between the two that are 100% owned by them, which means that banks can recover the money only from these three. Are you willing to bet that the banks are not going to recover anything much in spite of having an order in their favor? This is exactly how we are being fooled into thinking that banks are working hard at recovering our money. In fact, what they're doing is continuing to write it off. They call them technical write-offs, spend time and more money in courts in a recovery attempt, and most of it is just going to drag and not come back. Now, as I said, there are three issues over here that have come out in this arbitration. I'm going to go to the next one. One of the things that has come up is how ICICI Bank, I should say all banks, but in this case, there's something specific. ICICI Bank has misled the Reserve Bank of India. You remember we spoke earlier about SR's Minnesota company. RBI had apparently raised an alert about banks lending money to this US company. ICICI Bank was among those which was asked questions and very clearly said, we are not evergreening, as if we are not giving fresh loans to another group company to bail out this US company. What it did instead is routed money to a third company, and I'm going to read the name out. This was done by ICICI's uh, former managing director, Chanda Kochar, and was reported by the Indian Express. So what does she say? ICICI extended a loan of 365 million in foreign currency to SR Steel Mauritius, specifically for infusion into SR Minnesota. How interesting, isn't it? So they Indian banks have no problem even lying to the regulator. What is the regulator doing? Nothing much because there's action going on against the former CEO and MD and let's see how long that drags on. So come back to Mittal's fighting a battle in the US and UK. So they have this 1.5 billion award. They have now moved London. They're trying to recover money. And what happens over here, as I said, is that this is again reiterated that they're supposed to get the money back. And SR, of course, denies it. There's a UK High Court order which not only ratifies what ArcelorMittal has claimed, but it in fact notes that SR has dissipated a huge chunk of money. Dissipated is another word, I guess, for siphoning off money. And this matter seems to be nearing a conclusion and probably will happen far before the Indian courts decide the sale of SR Steel to ArcelorMittal. Before I close today, I need to mention that we wrote to SR, asked them what they had to say, they issued a statement. And I'm going to read that out. It says, SR is aware of a ruling issued by the Court of England on 25th March 2019 in respect to certain orders that were obtained by ArcelorMittal USA on an ex parte basis. I've explained why it was ex parte because SR did not participate. SR again, as usual, is saying it doesn't agree with many of the factual findings of the ruling, but it recognizes, luckily, that orders remain in place and they will continue to ensure that it adheres to those terms. If that is correct, then it means that they have to pay 1.5 billion first to the Mittals. There is a little more about where the order came from, which I've already explained about the iron ore pellet agreement and ESL is a Mauritius company and AMUSA, which is ArcelorMittal USA, has applied to recognize the award in Mauritius as well and SR is resisting this application. Cut a long story short, it means that SR may be the biggest defaulter here. In fact, there's a race even for who is the biggest defaulter, but as yet the biggest defaulter. 
but it has resources around the world to keep fighting every attempt to make any substantial recoveries. In their defense, they have sold off some businesses, but it's not good enough. SR Steel may be their flagship company, but I think when so much of money is owed to Indian banks, we need a resolution. Because as I keep saying in this series, it is our money, your money and my money ultimately paid through the exchequer. So it is our battle as well. Thank you.